let's discuss social rights of the women in Islam. I have broadly divided the social rights of women in Islam into four subcategories. The rights of the daughter in Islam, the rights of the wife in Islam, the rights of the mother in Islam, and the rights of the sister in Islam. First, we'll discuss the rights of the daughter in Islam. The Quran prohibits the killing of any female child or female infant. The Quran says in Surah Taqweer, chapter number 81, verse number 8 or 9, that when the female child is buried alive, and when she's asked, for what crime was she killed? Quran prohibits the killing of female children and female infants. The Quran does not only prohibit the killing of female infants, it prohibits the killing of all infants, all children, whether male or female. Quran says in Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 151, that kill not your children for want of sustenance. For it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will give sustenance to you and your children. Allah repeats the message in Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 31. Kill not your children for want of sustenance. For it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will give sustenance to your children and you. For killing of children is a major sin. There was a program that came on BBC. The name of the program, Assignment. And the title was Let Her Die. There was a British reporter by the name of Emily Beckenin, who comes from UK and does a survey of India. And she says that every day, more than 3,000 fetuses are being aborted in India after they are identified that they are females. If you multiply this figure by 365, the number of days in a year, you get a total of more than a million fetuses are being aborted in India alone after they are identified that they are females. And according to the Tamil Nadu government hospital report, it says out of 10 female children born alive in the Tamil Nadu government hospital, four are put to death. And there are big billboards and hoardings in states such as Rajasthan and Tamil Nadu saying, spend 500 rupees and save 500,000 rupees. Indicating, spend 500 rupees and do the ultrasonography. Identify that the child you're carrying is a female and abort her and save the couple of lakhs in upbringing her and the balance few lakhs in dowry. Spend 500 rupees and say 500,000 rupees. Very good bargain. Because of this evil practice of female infanticide and female feticide, you find the sex ratio in India, it is imbalanced. According to the census of 1901, for every thousand males in India, there were 900 and 72 females in 1901 census. As science and technology is advancing, you can identify easily whether the child is a male or a female. So as science and technology is advancing, the women are being subjugated. According to the census of 1981, in India, for every 1,000 males, there were 934 females. According to the census of 1991, for every 1,000 males, there were 927 females. You know, science, technology advancing, women are being subjugated. As I told you, the Western talk of women's liberalization is nothing but a disguised form of exploitation of body, deprivation of honor, and degradation of a soul. If this evil practice of female infanticide and female feticide stops, even in India, in the next few decades, the male and the female ratio, inshallah, would become equal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our great almighty God, does not only prohibit the killing of female children, 
It even rebukes the thought of a person becoming sad at the news of a female child. Quran says in Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 50 and 59, that when news is brought to one of them of the birth of a female child, his face darkens and he's filled with inward grief and he starts thinking that should he let her live in contempt or should he bury her alive? Ah, what an evil thought. The Quran rebukes the thought of a person becoming sad at the news of a birth of a female child. Leave aside killing, even becoming sad at the news of a birth of a female child. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like it. He rebukes it. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he said, it's mentioned in Sahih Hadith, volume number four. The beloved Prophet said that anyone who upbrings two daughters with love and affection till they grow up, they'll be as close to me as these two fingers on the day of judgment. And he kept both his two fingers together. There's another Sahih Hadith in which the Prophet said that anyone who upbrings two daughters with love and affection till they grow, they shall enter Jannah. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he did not only talk about equality, he actually practiced it. Once there was a man who kissed his son and placed him on one of his laps, but did not do the same for his daughter. The Prophet objected and said that the man was unjust. He should have even kissed his daughter and placed her on the other lap. 